Hello and welcome. In this video, we shall explore the very popular but extremely confusing statement moving clock runs slower in connection with time dilation effect in special relativity. Stick around and you will see how one arrives at this statement starting from the time dilation formula, how this statement can lead to an apparent contradiction and how one can resolve this issue by asking the right question. And the right question you should ask is who or rather what decides which clock is moving. You will have a clear answer to this in this video. You will also get a quick summary at the end which if you hold on to you will never go wrong with time dilation. But all that in good time. For now let's begin. To get to the moving clock runs slower statement we need to start with the time dilation formula. We have derived it in detail with explanation in a previous video on this channel. You should definitely have a look. The link is in the i button. But for now let me give you a quick brief on the formula itself. There are timestamps in the description. You can skip ahead to the contradiction and its resolution part if you already know that stuff. Okay, so we have two inertial observers, ourselves in frame S0 and another guy uniformly moving with respect to us in frame S'. If we draw a spacetime diagram for his motion, it will look like a slanted straight line with a constant slope v vector divided by c. This represents his uniform velocity v in units of light speed. We have a dedicated video on spacetime diagram also in this channel. Hit the i button in case you need it. Anyway, the moving guy in S prime observes two events, one and two, taking place at his location when his clock reads t1 prime and t2 prime respectively. We see the same two events at two different spatial locations denoted by x1 and x2 vector coordinates in S0 frame at time instants t1 and t2 respectively as per our clock readings. Time dilation effect says that the time interval delta t prime measured in this moving guy's clock differs from the time interval delta t measured in our clock by a factor of square root of 1 minus v vector modulo square by c squared, c being the light speed of course. Note that in the right hand side of the equation we have quantities measured in S0 frame namely the velocity of this moving guy in units of light speed with respect to us, the time interval between events 1 and 2 as per our clock reading etc. On the left hand side there is the time interval measured in S prime guy's clock. Now any velocity in units of light speed is a fraction so the factor under the square root is also a fraction as a whole and thus delta t is bigger than delta t prime. Therefore when we compare our time interval data with that of the moving guy we see that ours is dilated. That's the time dilation effect. Since our clock shows more passage of time between events 1 and 2 our clock must have ticked more number of times than the clock used by the moving guy in S prime frame. We intuitively relate ticking more number of times as running faster and ticking less number of times as running slower. Hence the statement moving clock runs slower in context of time dilation is coined. Ok so where is the confusion? The confusion arises when you take the statement moving clocks run slower at phase value and try to use it out of context. The context of this statement was two inertial frames S0 and S prime. S prime sees two events at the same location only separated by a time interval. S0 sees the same two events at different locations separated by some other time interval. Let's see what happens when we forget all that and only remember the statement moving clocks run slower and use it to reach newer conclusions. We know special relativity says that all uniform motions are relative, right? So there is no rest frame or moving frame in absolute terms. Therefore, from the point of view of the guy in S prime frame, it's the S0 frame that is us with our clock that is moving uniformly. So he can of course say that our clock is the moving one and therefore it must run slower than his. Thus we are in a logical fix now. Both inertial observers can say that the other guy that is the observer in the other inertial frame is moving. So both observers can claim that my clock runs faster and yours runs slower. But obviously both cannot be right. That's the contradiction and hence the confusion. So how do we resolve this? The question we need to settle objectively is in which frame of the two should the time interval between events 1 and 2 read more? That is which of the two inertial observers is to experience the dilated passage of time? We can decide this if we can somehow break the equivalent status of the two inertial observers S0 and S prime in context of our example. That can be done if we shift our focus to the pair of events between which the time interval measurements are being carried out. S prime sees both events at the same spatial location. This is important. We in S0 see them at different spatial locations. That's the distinction between S0 and S prime. 
Since for S prime there is no special separation between these events, he sees the space-time interval between them as time interval only. But we see the space-time interval as a combination of spatial and temporal intervals. By the way, I am assuming you know about space-time interval and its role in special relativity. But in case you don't, definitely check out the video in the i button. There you will find all about it. Now, the space-time interval measured in S0 and S prime, that is delta S and delta S prime, has to match. Why they must match is explained in the video I just told you about. If the space-time interval has to match, then delta T prime must be smaller than delta T. Hence, S prime will experience shorter passage of time and we in S0 will experience longer passage of time between events 1 and 2. So our clock will indeed tick faster and the clock in S prime will tick slower in connection with these two events. In this example, it is us who get to say moving clock runs slower because it is us who see the S prime guy with his clock move from the location of the first event to the location of the second event. Granted that the S prime guy also sees us to be moving but not between the location of the two events that we are concerned about in this particular case. So we are pretty much done here. All that is left is to give you the quick summary. These are a couple of facts that are common to all scenarios involving time dilation. First of all, time dilation only works for pair of events that are separated by time like space time interval. So, there can be no time dilation for events which are separated by space-like space-time interval or light-like space-time interval. Next important thing to notice is, for a given pair of events that are time-like separated, there is only one inertial frame where the observer sees both the events at same spatial location. This frame is unique and distinguished from all other inertial frames for this given event pair. Because all other inertial observers or inertial frames see these two events at different spatial locations and at different times. All these other inertial frames see this unique frame to be moving from the spatial location of the first event to that of the second event. The relative velocity of this unique observer, that is this unique frame, with respect to others will vary from one inertial frame to the next. It will be the spatial separation between the events divided by the time interval between the events as measured by each of these other inertial frames. Higher the relative velocity, more important or more prominent is the time dilation effect. So that's it for this video. Hope you have found it useful. Let me know in the comment section. If you disagree with any of the arguments I have given in the video, feel free to hit the comment section as well. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one. Bye bye.